Hello everyone, my name is Ranjan Marban. I am a Senior Analytics Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. I am joined with my colleague Sri Vidya Parth Sarathi, who is a Senior Big Data Architect. Today, we will be giving you a demo on the feature AWS Lake Formation Managed Redshift Data Shares. By the end of this video, you will learn how to centrally manage access and permissions for Amazon Redshift Data Share objects with AWS Lake Formation. In this video, we'll show how to build a purpose-built data mesh architecture using Amazon Redshift and AWS Lake Formation to simplify management and governance with fine-grained access control on the data share objects. Let's walk through the architecture and find out how to build this data mesh architecture. As you can see in this diagram, on the right-hand side, first, data producers will authorize access on the Amazon Redshift data share to a central governance account. Next, in the central governance account, we'll configure AWS Lake Formation to share the data set cross account with consumers. And then the consumer admin grants access to the consumer users on the shared data set, allowing fine gained access control at the database table and column level. Amazon Redshift data sharing enables you to efficiently share live data across Amazon Redshift data warehouses. Amazon Redshift now supports simplified governance of Amazon Redshift data sharing by enabling you to use AWS Lake Formation to centrally manage permissions on data being shared across your organization. With Lake Formation managed data sharing, you now have better visibility and control of data shared within and across accounts in your organization. It also helps improve the security posture of a data by managing granular entitlements such as table level, column level, or row level access on the Redshift data share objects. With AWS Lake Formation Managed Data Sharing, you can define policies once and enforce them consistently for multiple consumers. Now let's dive into a demo and view it in action. Now we are logged into the producer account. Let's navigate to the Redshift console. As part of this demo, you're going to use this cluster as the producer cluster. In order to use this feature, which is in preview currently, the producer cluster needs to be created using the preview underscore 2022 track, as you can see here. Now let's go to the data shares tab to create the data shares. And then let's go to the data shares created in my namespace section and choose connect to database. Here we provide dev as a database name and AWS user for a database user and choose connect. Now we are connected, let's create the data share. Enter the data share name. Next, choose a database. Here we are going to use dev. We'll keep the publicly accessible option turned on to allow the data share to be shared to clusters that are publicly accessible. Under data share objects, now click add. Let's use public from the schema dropdown. Under object types, use tables and views. And let's use add specific objects from the schema. For this demo, we're going to add the customer view to a data share. Let's choose add. Under data consumers, let's choose published AWS data catalog and let's choose other AWS accounts under published to following AWS accounts. Let's provide the AWS account ID of the central governance account here. And let's create a data share. The data share is created and as you can see, the status is shared, but still it is not ready to be used for the central governance account. Let's go to the navigation pane and choose data shares. Under in my account tab, you'll see the data share created has status as action required. Let's click on it. You'll see the consumer status as pending authorization here. Select the checkbox against the data consumer ID and choose authorize. Click 
unauthorized again. Now you will see the consumer status has been authorized. Now the data share can be accessed by the central governance account. As a next step, Shivita is going to show you how to configure AWS Lake Formation in the central governance account. We are now in the central governance account logged in as a data lake admin. This central account acts as a governing body that oversees data sharing and access control across producers and consumers. It enables you to centrally manage access permissions on Redshift data share using Lake Formation and provides a single place to track its usage across various accounts. Now we will navigate to Lake Formation console to verify the data lake setting. On the left navigation panel, go to the settings. Verify that the default permissions for the newly created databases and tables are not selected to enable the lake formation mode. On the left navigation panel, go to the data sharing. This shows the list of Redshift data share invitations received by the account. You can also choose Review Invitation button on the top to get to this list. The Configuration tab provides the details of the invitations received. This list includes the name of the data share, the source account ID from which the data share was received, the date that the invitation was received, and the status of the invitation. This status provides current participation status with the data share. When the data share is received, the status shows up as not accepted. To respond to this data share, select the data share and choose Review Invitation. The pop-up window provides details about the invitation. After reviewing the details, you can choose to accept or you can choose to reject the data share. Once the data share is accepted, we can now create a database in the AWS Glue data catalog that associates and maps the data share and its object to the metadata catalog. Provide a name for the database. Choose skip to review and create. After reviewing the details, choose create database. Once the process is complete, you can verify the created database by going to the data sharing tab and selecting shared databases. Now the central account can share the database and tables to the consumer account using lake formation cross account feature. For this demo, we will share the database and the table to the consumer account on account level. To grant database level permission, on the left navigation panel, select Data Lake Permissions. Choose Grant. Under Principle, choose External Accounts. Provide the account ID of the consumer account. Under LF Tags or Catalog Resources, choose Name Data Catalog Resources. Under the Database, choose the database that was created pointing to the data share. Under the Database Permission, select Describe under the Database Permission. Select Describe under the Grantable Permissions. The Grantable Permissions are required so that the data lake admin in the consumer account can delegate access on the resources to other personas in the account. Choose Grant. Now, to provide table level access, choose Grant. Under the principle, choose External Account. 
provide the consumer account id and if lf tags or catalog resources choose name data catalog resources under database select the database that was created pointing to the data share for providing table level permission select the tables in this case we will provide access to all the tables under the database to the consumer account under the table permission choose select and describe under grantable permissions choose select and describe as well we can leave all data access as such so this provides complete access to the tables and all the columns that are included in the tables choose grant now the central governance account has granted access on the databases and the tables to the consumer account we are now logged in to the consumer account as a data lake admin glue database and tables that are shared from the external accounts are made available to the consumer account through resource access manager now we will navigate to the resource access manager console on the left navigation panel go to resource shares we can see two invitations in the pending status to respond to this invitation select the share and choose accept resource share when the central governance account shared the database and tables to the consumer account it initiates two ram invites one for the database and other for the table now choose the second invite and choose accept resource share now we can verify that both the share has been accepted and the status shows as active once the ram invites are accepted we can see the database and tables in the glue data catalog now let's go to the lake formation console choose database and we can see the database that was accepted now the consumer data lake admin can delegate resource access to other iim users and roles in the account for this demo we will use an iim user consumer 1 and grant permissions on non sensitive columns in consumer view so to grant database level permission choose the database under action choose grant under the principle choose consumer 1 under the im rules under lf tags or catalog resources the database is already chosen for the database permission select describe and choose grant to grant table level permission choose the database under the action choose grant under the principles select consumer 1 under the lf tags or catalog resources the database is already chosen select the table consumer underscore view and to grant non sensitive column access under table permission choose select under data permission choose the column based access to provide the list of non sensitive columns under the columns select the non sensitive columns and choose grant As a next step, Ranjan is going to show how to configure the Redshift cluster 
in the consumer account and access the data share managed by Lake Formation. Now we are logged into the consumer account. Let's navigate to the Amazon Redshift console. In the left navigation pane, choose Query Editor V2. From the left tree view panel, choose a consumer cluster. Keep in mind the consumer cluster also needs to be created using the preview underscore 2022 track similar to the producer cluster. Now right click on the cluster name and choose create connection. Under authentication, we're going to use temporary credentials. On the database name, I will provide def here as my database. Under username, I'm going to give AWS user, which is my admin username. Now let's click on create connection. Once you are connected to the cluster, we'll run few SQL commands to create the database, the user, and grant permissions. First, we'll create the Redshift database from the shared Blue Catalog database. Let's go ahead and run this command. As you can see, the database has been created. Now, we'll run this SQL to create the consumer one user. The user has been created now. As next step, we are now going to grant access on the Redshift database to the consumer one user. Now, the consumer one user has been granted access on the Redshift shared database. As a next step before logging into the AWS console as consumer one IAM user, let's configure query data v2 to use authenticate using ham credentials choose the settings icon in the bottom left corner of query data v2 then click on account settings under connection settings select Authent authenticate with iam credentials this will allow to use the iam identity of the consumer one user to authenticate and connect to the database choose save to apply this change. We are now logged into the AWS console as consumer one IAM user. Let's navigate to the Amazon Redshift console. In the left navigation pane, choose Query Data V2 to connect to the consumer cluster. Choose the consumer cluster from the left TV panel. Click on Create Connection. Under authentication, choose temporary credentials using your IAM identity. This will use the IAM identity of the consumer one IAM user to authenticate and connect to the database. For database, you're using dev. Choose create connection. Once you're connected to the cluster, you can run this SQL command to validate your logged in as consumer one user. Let's run it. As you can see, it is logged in as consumer one IAM user. Now let's run this SQL command to validate access of consumer one user on the shared database object. As you can see, it is throwing permission denied error since I have granted access on only few specific columns of the shared catalog object to the consumer one user. Now let's run this SQL command which includes few columns which are granted access to the consumer one user. As you can see now, consumer one user is able to successfully run the query and get the results. This shows how you can achieve fine grained access control on the data share objects. With this, we end our demo of how to send and manage access and permissions to Amazon Redshift data shares using AWS Lake Formation. Thank you for watching.